Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and verify the sensor information on this cold engine first. Now I've got my code reader hooked up to the uh, computer port here, and I'm using the two line Sykes and Picavant. So currently, right now, I'm just going through the components and verifying. So for instance, I've got zero, uh, zero RPM on the crank sensor, idle switch is off, park neutral is off, that's for automatic. Uh, manifold pressure 84 kPa. That's normal for my area. I'm at high altitude, so we have about 20% less air. So <clears throat> 84 kPa is is a normal reading for me. Coolant temp says 23 Celsius. Inlet air 26 Celsius. You know, not not big a deal being off three Celsius there. But let's go ahead and verify the two. So coolant temp. Um, let's see. I got a laser gun here. So. Yeah, it says 27 Celsius, 26 on here, 23, that's pretty close. And in the air, again, it's a cold engine, so it's about 26. So these right now are reading, reading about what I would expect. At least they are reading the same, or close. Once I get it running, and I'll see if this uh, inlet air changes, and then I'll check and see if the coolant temp sensor also changes its reading as it warms up. Um... No, there is no ambient temp sensor on this car. So, interesting enough, so this is what I would normally expect to see if a sensor was like really bad or disconnected or something, it would just go off the chart. Battery voltage, it's a little low, but it's fine. Throttle position, let's go ahead and check to make sure that the throttle does respond when I move the throttle here. And we see that the voltage is increasing, so um, it is operating at least electrically correct. <clears throat> so that's the end of the components so that I can test when it's not running. So the next step is I'll get it fired up and we'll recheck and see what, um, what it says once again. Now there is a, uh, another section in here that I can go into. I can go and read um, errors. This one does mention a code and it mentions uh, inlet air temp sensor. So this could have been like it got disconnected, but I'll go ahead and clear this error just in case uh, it's old, and I'll go ahead and start the engine after that. So I can just go here, clear errors, and the codes go away. So yeah, I'll go ahead and fire it up and see if I get any new errors, and I'll also double check the sensors and make sure they are uh, reading correctly. So now that it's running, um, I'm given one additional sensor here, the lambda sensor, and we can see that the voltage is fluctuating, which is a good sign because it means that the sensor is providing information. Now, whether or not it's accurate or not, I don't know, but at least it is showing a variation in its readings. And it's also on the warm-up cycle, so uh, I don't expect this to be accurate right now. But we can go ahead and check the other sensors. Again, we're not touching the throttle, so it's still under one volt. Yeah, it's under warm-up cycle right now, so it's about 1,200 RPMs. So manifold, since it's running, it's creating a vacuum, so we should see something less than 85 kPa when it's running. We see the coolant temperature sensor is showing an increase in temperature. Inlet air is still about the same. So right now I'd say the coolant temp and air inlet temp are uh, functioning appropriately right now and 13.9 means that the alternator is, is producing voltage so that's good so yeah so far so good so maybe I'll take this out for test drive and uh, come back and retest all the sensors and see where we are so the car has been running for a bit now you can see the idles are starting to drop down we've got some temperature in this engine now. So the coolant says 77 and we're about 71, 72. So yeah, I say that's on par. Inlet 34. Let's see, well, we'll just take off the, take it off and measure it here. Yep, 34. So yeah, my conclusion is that both the sensors are operating properly for the inlet air temp and coolant temp. I also want to take a look at, um, let's see here. 
Yeah, so let's say the lambda is going from 1.2 to 4. Yeah, so it's going up, and then it's going to come back down. Yeah, so for now, at least I'm thinking that the uh, O2 sensor is working properly. So I think all the sensors are working. I'm going to let her in for a little bit longer, and uh, we'll see if we get any fault codes on this. So now that we let the car run for a bit, and it's back down to stone cold here, um, I want to go ahead and double check what kind of fault codes, if any, have cropped up. So let me plug my meter back in here. Now, whatever I find, um, they may not be valid. It might just be that I didn't let it run long enough or I need to drive it further, but I just want to see if anything came up in the short period of time that I was running it for. So, all right, let's read errors. Yeah, so no, no errors were found, which is excellent. And like I said earlier, both the air inlet temperature and the coolant temperature were showing uh, increasing readings as this was warming up. And we saw that the uh, O2 sensor was having a voltage that was going from high to low. So it showed that there was activity, uh, normal activity anyway. So at this point, I think this is this is this computer's happy with the information that's being provided. It's getting the correct vacuum signal from the manifold. And um, I'll take it out for a longer test drive and see how it behaves. But it's just good to see that there were no errors after our um, my short period of time that I was having it running here in the garage. So uh, since this seems to be okay for now, I'm going to get move on to other aspects of this car that need to be addressed. Uh, I did notice that there are some issues with the brakes, so I'm going to go ahead and jack it up and start taking a look at those. So I've been out for a test drive, and this thing drives beautifully. Fairly quiet, fairly smooth. Um, anyway, I brought it back because I wanted to check, see what the coolant temperature and, and manifold temperature and air temperature and all the sensors are saying. And they're all reading correct, but in case you don't have to have one of these, just check the uh, O2 sensor. You can always use your trusty tuning gauge, lambda gauge here. And uh, 103, 104, that seems perfect. So, just another way of concurring that the O2 sensor is working. But, yeah, see, everything seems to be really nice on here. The only downside that I've seen so far is that I've noticed the coolant temperature. Let me get in there. Coolant temperature gauge is really lazy. So, that's the only thing that seemed to bother me. And the uh, steering wheel was a little bit off position, but other than that, this car drove really well. So I pulled up the wiring diagrams for throttle body car. The coolant temperature gauge is fed information on this green with blue wire from the MEMS control unit. So that means the ECU is sending the signal to the dash. So my suspicion is that there's something wrong with the signal getting to the gauge cluster. So I'm going to check out uh, connections at the gauge cluster to see if there's a problem because it seems like the, the fuel gauge also is a bit lazy, but um, I'm going to start with just checking the connections here. So we're back at the car, and this gauge cluster has one main wiring harness connector that runs the whole thing. So I've gone ahead and removed it here, as you can see. The uh, I'm finding that the pins are, are fairly corroded. Um, so I'm just going to give them a bit of a clean. And the rotary tool with the steel brush seems to be the tool of choice for doing jobs like this. So I'm going to give this a bit of a clean and... Plug it back in and see if we get some better results out of these gauges. Well, I'll come out to the engine bay because I want to have a look at some of the grounds. And down here, down here, is the one that grounds the ECU. I went ahead and took the bolt out, cleaned the mounts, and cleaned the eyelets. And then I turned my attention to the engine ground, and look at the state of this. That's terrible. So I'm going to give this a clean. Maybe this will solve my problem. Well, I finished cleaning up that ground strap, reinstalled that. Obviously that one's reattached there. I also did clean the ground strap over there. And I had it running. And I was only seeing like 160, 175 engine coolant temperature using my laser temperature sensor gun. And this thing should be running about 195. So 
I'm actually going to take the thermostat out and have a look and see what temperature that was set at because these injection cars should be running 195. So I'm starting to wonder if maybe perhaps the coolant temperature gauge problem I have in the dash is actually related to a bad thermostat or an incorrect thermostat. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out as soon as this thing cools down. Well, I was wrong about the thermostat. This one is an 88 Celsius, which is a 195. And um, yeah, so this was the correct thermostat. I went ahead and put a new one in here anyway, and new gaskets and stuff because it was kind of green staining on there, so that that got fresh freshened up. But uh, anyway, I did put another one 88 degree uh, thermostat in there as well. So. It is as it should be. So I think what I'm going to do next is just go out for a long test drive and see if this thing really um, just takes a long time to warm up. Well, after that long test drive, I noticed that with using my temperature gun that I had um, hot cooling up here. You know, it was 88, 90 degrees up here. But back at the manifold, it was only showing about 78 degrees. So it seems like there's a coolant flow restriction going through the manifold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain out this coolant, or what's left of it anyway, and try and flush out those uh, manifold lines. And then I'm going to put in some uh, chemical treatment in here, run it for a bit, try to do a chemical flush, and then um, put some fresh coolant in and see if we can get some better uh, better readings out there. Because like I said, it was hot up here, you know, 195, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, in the radiator top tank, but back down there, you know, this is 88. That down there was like 78, 75. So clearly coolant was not flowing properly through that loop to getting to the coolant temperature sensor, which is probably why the gauge wasn't reading correctly either because, you know, it just wasn't getting as hot as it was up here. And it should be as hot back there as, as it is up here because this stacked thermostat housing, um, the, lower, the lower line here, uh, the coolant flows out of it, you know, down to the manifold back unrestricted and then if you need heat you can open up the heater valve but all this happens before the thermostat because the thermostat is in this middle section of this plate so until it opens it doesn't flow into the radiator but uh yeah that's definitely definitely what's going on so hopefully the, the coolant flush will help this engine out and fix my gauge problem because clearly it's not an electrical issue at all all that electrical connection problem stuff i noticed earlier yeah, it was, a, it was a nuisance to have all that corrosion there, but it certainly isn't the main reason why this is reading cold. So now it's time to do the coolant drain. I've got a suitably large pan, but always never big enough pan, ready to catch all the drippings. And uh, I need to disconnect the lower hose, and then I'll be able to drain out all the rest of the cooling in the coolant system. But first, I've got to get to it, and as every Mini owner knows, that is extremely difficult to get to, and I'll show you why on the other demonstration engine over there. So here we are at the back, and this is the hose clamp that I'm referring to here, the uh, this one there. That's the one that I want to disconnect from that car so that I can drain all of the coolant out of the, uh, out of the radiator, and it's very difficult to get to. Now, you'll notice that this one is oriented with the clamp in the upward position. That's how I like to set them because that means that I can get down there with a really long screwdriver and undo the clamp. But hopefully this one's set up the same way. Well, this one ended up being a fighter. I had to take the whole radiator out just to get that lower hose off. But uh, anyway, what I've done here is I've hooked up my airline to the upper hose and I'm just gonna blow some air through it and try to force out any of the material in the uh, intake system. Man, that's rusty. So interestingly, I'm feeling some pressure building up in the system when I'm blowing the air into this this upper hose. And I've got the heater valve uh, blocked, so all the air is being forced down into the intake manifold and then back out again. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a restriction here, which is why I'm doing this. So I've got to switch 
from the upper hose to the line that comes out of the heater over here. So I'm hoping to get some other other flow in the reverse direction to try and force this manifold free. So we'll see what the comes out. Well, that seems fairly free now, but it is also just blowing into the uh, into the block here. So I think this definitely needs a chemical treatment. So after doing a bunch more blowing with air directly into the uh, intake manifold there using this silicone hose, uh, I did hear a loud pop sound and started getting a bunch of rusty material out of the bottom hose. So at this point, I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to give it flush with uh, just hose water. And then I will go ahead and reassemble the cooling system and add the chemical treatments that I'm going to run through this, this engine. And then we'll flush those treatments and then come back and fill it up with some uh, fresh coolant. And I think we should be good. So here's the coolant I did manage to capture. We'll just call this sludge. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty rusty stuff. So I'm in the process of refitting all the hoses, and I uh, just want to show you guys the inside of this radiator before I put it back in because it certainly has its share of little, little rusty bits. So again, this is one of the reasons why I'm actually, you know, going to the trouble of, of using a chemical uh, cleaning agent because clearly uh, it needs it. Obviously it could just use a new radiator. Um, and that may be the way this car goes in the end. But for now, I'm just gonna have to fit this one back onto the car, but we'll we'll double check and see what happened to the top of this tank. See if all these little rust particles end up getting dissolved or whatnot. So yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens to this radiator.